Well, uh, good good evening. This is uh, Sawyer for another two-hour program. <coughs> I'm focusing on uh, Matthew chapter 24, uh, starting with verse uh, 27, is it? 27, um, which starts off as, For as the lightning... Let me go right over to it. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so also so shall also coming Son of Man be. Now, um, if you follow the previous broadcasts, then I I read the uh, verse from Luke that uh, says, says a similar thing. It actually, the setting is the same as far as uh, Jesus being on the Mount of Olives and privately uh, talk, talking to his disciples who asked him uh, because he mentioned something about how all these stones of all these buildings in the temple will be thrown down. Now, there's a... There's a bunch of Christians that believe that was the uh, uh, the uh, leveling of Jerusalem in uh, 70 A.D. Or maybe it was 30 A.D. I might be getting those dates mixed up. But uh, that's beside the point um, uh, that... <clears throat> uh, that the answer to the question was all about the future. And uh, the next level, uh, 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 the kingdom of God, when they send their representatives, they send them every uh, thousand or two years. Okay, so uh, for people to consider that um, he was talking about uh, like a mere... 30 or 50 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 years later or even hundreds of years later uh, is not consistent with the whole modus operandi of the kingdom of God through the evaluation of the Old and New Testaments. The Old and New Testimonies from all the eyewitnesses that experienced all that um, history. Um, so, I mean, but you know, everybody and their brother has something to say that kind of singles them out a little bit, and then a whole bunch of people follow that because they generally respect that individual for some reasons, and so they tend to believe that person's interpretation. Like there's that fellow in, uh, in Brazil that is popular right now in some ways, in Brazil. I'm not sure how popular, but apparently he has some following that makes the news and has a website and all that. And he says he's the return of Jesus and that he's going to uh, he's going to come back. And th this scripture actually in particular, uh, he's interpreting as he's going to be taking an airplane flying around the world uh, um, uh, I don't know if he's going to be picking up individuals that he says are his disciples because he's claiming to be Jesus. He's also claiming that Jesus, when he came out of the tomb, was a, a spirit, not a physical being, even though there's a number of accounts that say that Jesus even said that he was not a spirit. He was very clear about that, and he proved that he wasn't a spirit, that he was... They had a physical body, and he ate from food to prove it. And he had people, uh, uh, Thomas, touch his body and touch his wounds to see that it was the same person because he looked a little different, okay? Uh, because, uh, because when he... Because the healing that he went through uh, changed his body to some degree. Changed that physical body... 
um, to where at first when he came out of the tomb, he was not able to be touched at all. And he told some that he had, that had uh, greeted him when he came out of the tomb, uh, not to touch me because I have not ascended to my father yet. And, uh, but then after that, he must have he must have returned to his father, and then came back again, and uh, and at that point then he was able to be touched. Um, now that probably has something to do with uh, the energy that was doing the healing of his body, uh, the amount of mind that was in it, the amount of mind that he was bringing to it. Uh, Probably, here's my, my sense right now about it is, and this might be coming from Tiendo, but I don't know, um, is that in order for his, um, body to be healed, he had to bring more of his next level mind into it. And that had to be done on, on a spacecraft. So his father took him on the spacecraft, if that was what happened, and would have uh, um, whatever the process is of getting mind into a physical body, uh, as we saw with Jesus' baptism, uh, that they could see the body, the soul body, coming into that body that had already been awakened. So what we're talking about are degrees of mind entering the body, entering the uh, that container that we're calling a, a, that is a physical body. That it becomes a container for the mind of the next level that's coming into it. Just like spirits, like you know we've seen in movies and things, or, or we've heard in stories, and uh, some of us have had experiences with uh, spirits. Uh, taking over uh, a human's body, you, we see that with channelers, and to where a different voice comes out, and uh, they can even look different, they have a different countenance, um, uh, because, uh, because that spirit's countenance, and that spirit's uh, programming, which don't forget, a spirit was once a living human, or a human equivalent, if they were a space alien, then they were a human equivalent. So, uh, so, the genetic memory um, is saved to, is, is what is saved uh, from that physical body. For remember, everything that physical body experiences is saved as genetic memory. Okay, so I'm, I'm calling it genetic memory because it's, it's, like, it's just like software overlaying the hardware. Just like, just like you have computer software that um, uh, runs on top of what they say, the word they use is against the operating system software, which is running against the hardware. And uh, the hardware is the nuts and bolts. Is you hit it, you smack it, you know, and it, uh, you, know, you can feel it. It's solid. It's made out of metal and plastic or whatever it is, it's silicone. Okay, but uh, and in the human body, it's made out of uh, dense flesh, flesh material, as opposed to the kind of flesh that a plant has, which isn't flesh. We don't call it flesh, but it's also physical, physical and has a structure. So it is, it is a body. A plant is a body as well, um, except the plant doesn't have uh, the kind of mind that... Um, and the kind of spirit that a human has, or an animal has. Um, as we go up the evolutionary ladder, it's more, the, the, the mind becomes more and more sophisticated. And it's like having software that's more and more sophisticated, that can do more. And, uh, and it's really, that analogy is perfect, actually. I mean, you know, as perfect as you're going to get. I mean, I'm sure you can find holes in it, but... Uh, um, so, so our mind, which, you know, everything we talk about, everything we think, everything we do, uh, uh, knows exactly what we look like. So, uh, when we look at ourselves in the mirror, we, have a ref we know what we look like. 
at least what we look like through our eyes. But then when we see pictures of ourselves, sometimes we're a little startled that we look like that. Uh, sometimes at, the, at first it can be, you know, like, do I, does that really me? It's like, I don't know. Um, and uh, I remember that's the way I reacted the first time I saw a video of myself. Um, and then, uh, and the same with audio. In the same case, we hear ourselves differently than we act than actually we are recorded to sound frequently. But uh, so so when a spirit that doesn't have a body anymore comes uh, to close proximity, I don't know how close is necessary, but imagine like even overlaying the human body and and occupying the same space, but a spirit would be occupying the same space, but uh, invisibly, of course. And uh, and a spirit, a spirit wouldn't um, wouldn't look like to uh, well. I think there's different kinds of spirits that have different intensity or different degrees of mind. Uh, um, depending on uh, their experience in life. And uh, so I, I believe that some spirits, uh, if you were to see them, uh, could you could see them as an entire body. And other spirits might just look like a point of light in the air. And um, I don't really know what the difference would be in how that would take place like that, but it might have to do also with uh, how long they've been in the spirit world. I don't know exactly how that works, but uh, it might also have to do with our programming and whether we can actually digest uh, the programming of that spirit. That's what I was getting at by saying that um, when Jesus came out of the tomb, uh, let's say his, his, more of his next level mind uh, came into his body because I'm not so sure that, uh, well, I'm pretty sure actually that all of uh, the next level mind of the individual that did the task as Jesus uh, was, used, was needed for, to do that task. I suspect that uh, a lot of the programming that when I say programming, I'm not talking about something that's um, like the programming of a robot. I'm talking about um, a way of thinking or um, a conceptual aspect to that mind, to where it's not, uh, that has a certain amount of consciousness with it. Uh, and, and can function in mul different ways uh, just as a mind, even without um, a, a physical body, obviously. And uh, so, uh, so the idea for becoming a member of the next level is to substitute their programming for the human programming. For instance, an, an example of human programming is that... Uh, we have to eat to live, okay? Uh, none of us dispute that. Well, maybe some people think that we can breathe ourselves uh, through life. A breatharian, they would call them, but I, I never met one. I haven't actually read anything about any. And uh, if there are any, uh, I, I doubt they can live very long uh, in a human body. So the human body is in a decaying environment of the earth and uh, requires nutrition to s sustain all the cells of that physical body. And I don't think there's enough nutrition in the air through the elements that we inhale uh, to sustain a human body. Now, uh, if the next level provided nutrition somehow, um, or maybe a next level member could sustain a human body uh, by just their mind, but that's not, I believe, the way it works according to Tian Do. I think it's the other way around. That the next level mind, when it's inhabiting a human body, actually degrades that body faster. Because it's like, it's like too hot for it. 
It's like, you know, uh, like plugging in a 110 uh, hard piece of hardware, like a toaster, into a 220 slot socket, which would be like the next level mind providing the energy. And uh, the wires uh, could easily just burn up. That whole wire casing could just burn up. And it, it, could, it could fry, you know, the circuit breaker or whatever is in that toaster, or if it has it, or the capacitors or whatever little uh, electronic devices it has to regulate the current. It could fry the whole thing. That's why people, when they get a, hit by electricity or uh, lightning strike, uh, in their home or in their body, um, uh, it can tend to, depending on where it hits and how intense it is, can actually leave somebody uh, uh, without any memories and uh, all kinds of problems can be wiped out. Just like, you know, taking a magnet, a strong magnet to a hard drive uh, uh, can actually wipe it pretty clean of all its data. So the same thing with... Uh, I'm suggesting that that after that in order to heal that body, more next level mind needed to come into that body, and then and then uh, because uh, because of that, um, having that much next level mind in their body might be a problem for that body, and or uh, obviously something needed to be done uh, to where. Um, uh, Jesus needed to take that body, uh, the body named Jesus, uh, to wherever his father was, his, old, his older member, and uh, have something done to it so that it could return and prove to everybody that he was physical. Because that was a, a huge, huge point to his whole mission, to survive death. First of all, tell everybody uh, the formula. Deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. That's the formula. It's really that simple. Deny yourself means um, deny your own will. And that's in the Lord's Prayer as well. Thy will be done on earth. And, uh, and people, when they read the Lord's Prayer, sometimes they, I, I, I've seen uh, what are considered to be astute theologians talk about the Lord's Prayer, and talk about that verse where it says, uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I would read that uh, um, as the way it was intended, which was a petitioning of, uh, of asking the Lord to, to be on earth, but by saying thy will be done, you're actually saying that you want the Lord's will to be your will. Because don't forget the next level doesn't, uh, doesn't exert their will on the human kingdom in such a way that does not give the humans the total option to believe in them or not, to serve them or not, to be, to be an aspiring student uh, a prospective member of their crew or not. Uh, those choices are always provided, and they're provided in stages. Uh, if, if, they, if they wanted to just, you know, uh, they could just come over and, and take everybody over, but they have no use for that. They, have, they can build computerized robots if they want, if they just want people to do things for them, uh, um, but they don't need that. Because they've outgrown that, they, because the, the, they designed it this way, so that um, uh, we would have the choice to gravitate towards uh, evolving beyond our human existence. And it's a full strata, or, or the way it was said in the Bible, is a, a, a chasm, like a, a, or a, a gulf. Um, between the kingdom levels, just like there's a gulf, chasm, strata level between uh, the kingdom levels on earth, mineral to plant to animal to human to uh, above human. And don't get that mixed up with the fact that humans act like, have worse behavior than 
than animals. Uh, it's true uh, many times, uh, but uh, the difference is that the animal doesn't have the choice to behave the way they behave, where uh, a human has the choice to not behave that way. And so uh, for them, it's worse. It's worse. A human is worse off than an animal. Like, say, you know, take, take an animal that lives off of killing other animals. Uh, that's the way they were designed. And, uh, but if they end up killing more than they need, or more than their, uh, uh, their herd or their crew or their, whatever you call uh, a lion's um, family, uh, then I suspect then they're, they're actually uh, not, um, they're not in line for uh, further evolution from that strain. I'm not sure exactly how that works. I'm going beyond the territory that I am capable. So, but this is an example. I believe that, I mean, there are examples of this that T and Do gave because they use dog, dogs as an example all the time as being uh, brought into the human house and domesticated. And that, become, that starts to help them develop the mind to where they can begin to interface with humans uh, on a human level to where um, in the future, uh, uh, um, when they die, uh, they may end up hanging around a baby. And so that some of their mind will actually uh, influence that baby. And in that way, uh, that mind uh, would actually continue to evolve because it would... Uh, I guess because, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if this is the way P and O would see it, but uh, because when that, when then, like a, let's say a dog uh, is is influencing a baby in the family, alive or dead, you know, a dead dog spirit or a, a living dog, when they're influencing that baby. If it's a good experience. If it's a good experience, then that baby has a, a, a positive view of that dog and uh, wants to have dogs themselves when they grow up. And, uh, and so in that way, more dogs get the opportunity to be in a domesticated environment. And that, that makes for more spirits, uh, dog spirits. And so basically that's evolving the species to where they're now the dogs are born into that human environment, uh, you know, as puppies. And uh, so they grow up entirely with human interface. Um, and so they, they, they have more and more of the qualities that they're taught. And that's... Uh, um, I, I imagine that the next level can then use those spirits uh, to bring them back like a database. And actually, uh, um, after they wipe the planet clean of the, even the spirit world, where the animals are and where the humans are and where the space aliens are, and, and they, they take all the human spirits and, and souls that they want and they put them in their temporary holding areas so that they can be brought back for a future opportunity, then the next level has an assortment of degrees of evolution uh, towards, towards and above human uh, in their storage. Doe called it being put on ice, but he, he said that it wasn't cold, even though space is kind of cold, and, and some of that storage uh, is, is probably going to be in what's called the, the localized uh, uh, New Jerusalem heaven. Um, it's actually spoken about as heaven. That's why heaven also means the sky, in addition to meaning the firmament and the, uh, where the planets are and the, the sun and the moon uh, do, their, uh, do their things. Um, so, so what Next Level is doing then when they bring back spirits in addition to bringing back souls 
is they're like feeding the planet because each of those spirits is its own little database. That's the genetic memory is. Uh, our memory is a database. And when it's uh, um, when we die, uh, uh, then when we get next to somebody else and we have somewhat of an interface with that individual, which can be anything in, having anything in common, which pretty much is easy to do, because there's a, uh, you know because they were just a human also, and so. Uh, uh, they are automatically going to have a lot in common. But of course, the closer they resemble the actual uh, flesh structure of that hardware of the human body that they're interfacing with, is they're going to have a stronger interface with. That's why our, our past ancestors, uh, family and friends, uh, have a, a, a more um, uh, congruent uh, interface with those in physical bodies now. And uh, because because the programming is, is from the same place. Because uh, <clears throat> don't forget the we're all like leaves on the tree. So if the leaf falls off, we're dead. Okay, the physical body's dead. But everything that the leaf experienced during its life was recorded in its genetic memory, which is actually st stored uh, electromagnetically. So it's like software, like I said, running on the hardware uh, leaf structure of, of the genes that each can hold a tremendous amount of data of all the memories. Uh, every detail of memory can be held on that genetic structure, uh, although a lot of it's not necessary, and so it uh, doesn't end up, uh, well, it all contributes to an image. Uh, uh, I don't know what the format is of the saving of the genetic memory, but um, I don't even think the scientists know, have a foggy idea of what I'm talking about. I mean, they have a, some do, some have more than others. I mean, there's, uh, What's that individual's name who does the, uh, something about the science of belief? Anyway, but, uh, so when Jesus uh, then went back to his disciples, uh, he looked different because uh, more of the mind of his next level body that he that Doe said he left in a closet to when Doe came, and I don't know what Jesus did with uh, his next level body that he had, but I imagine he left it in a closet, uh, you know, equivalent of a closet, what we would call a closet. Um, and so when he brought more of that into that physical human body named Jesus, uh, uh, it took more of the it took on more of the appearance of that body because remember uh, the soul and, and the spirit are formed by all the experiences of the human body, which includes how we look. That's what I was trying to get at, and I went by Jericho to get there. But that's what it takes for me to try to explain things. So we're lucky that I uh, get around to Jericho. Uh, anymore because for, for so long I would uh, lose track of where I was and never actually dot the I or cross the T. I think I did cross the T this time. So that's a little introduction to T and Do, the two witnesses from Revelations 11, who were the father and the son. The father being a woman, took a woman's body incarnate in the flesh. That's what son of man means. And a bunch of humans know that uh, son of man means the same thing as, uh, is like a phrase, son man. There was no of in it. Uh, um, 
and man was homo sapien based in the Greek and uh, not that exact word but close to it and uh, so it's talking about human so it's basically saying human offspring Jesus came as a human offspring uh, Moses came as a human offspring Moses said that upon the return oh, he didn't say it would be him because he didn't know if he'd be, be him. I, I think there's some evidence that he was not happy with his performance for Jehovah, for his older member. Um, but that would be typical of an older member to not be happy about their performance. So it doesn't mean that Jehovah was not happy with his performance. Uh, in fact, according to the, uh, the scriptures with Jesus, when Jesus was baptized and came out of the water, and uh, and people were able, some of the people were able to see a bodily shape descend upon his physical body like a dove. Uh, they also heard a voice. Some of them heard a voice that they understood to say, uh, "This is uh, Jesus, who is my uh, beloved Son, who am I, who am I, who I am well pleased with." Uh, which he also said at the Transfiguration Mount with uh, James, John, and Peter in witness to. Uh, so when the next level wants something to be recorded, they make sure that there's enough witnesses to record it so that uh, we can get s several different views. And um, at least one or two will survive. And so... so uh, so to deny that Jesus was physical when he uh, came back from the grave and left is denying uh, the veracity of, of the records. And uh, so how you could say that, how you can say to yourself that, that you're, you're Jesus returning with a new name, which is necessary because uh, it says that in prophecy, it has to be the case. And... Uh, and it makes practical sense also that it has to be the case. Because he has to have a body that's consistent with the programming of the human bodies of, that his disciples will be taking over in order to finish the overcoming that they hadn't finished 2,000 years ago. So, uh, so the whole thing has to be physical. And that's why it said in the scriptures before in, uh, in Luke 17 that uh, he, he's not coming in a way that you can observe with your eyes. Uh, and that's why it says also in, uh, over here in, um, let me go back over to this one. In uh, Matthew 24, 24, for as a lightning that lighteth out of one part under heaven, which one part is in, in the actual verse and shouldn't be. It's misleading, I believe. Well, I mean, it's like, you know, it's like every interpretation can have its value. What the heck did I do here? Okay. I gotta mess up things here. There it is. Somehow I got into another page on my. Okay, so where it says. Well, I, I did more study on this. I, I should probably finish that first because of uh, um, what I talked about a few days ago on my Sunday broadcast, that uh, a strape, uh, which you can see below here, 796, a strape, they're saying means lightning. By analogy, glare, lightning, bright shining. 
But lightning, well, what does that mean to us? That he's coming as a lightning bolt? Well, that's what Christians have been led to believe because of this interpretation here. But if you look at the root of a strop A or a strop O, it takes you to 797, and now it says to flash as lightning. Now, that's a big difference than being lightning. But so a stropo, um, and if you actually look at lightning in this context, it's a stropo. So what we're saying is that the word lightning got its origin related to what we see as lightning, which is the glare, the bright shining part of it. So, and, but, but in this context, a strape is a noun. So it's a person, place, or thing. And we know it's not a person in the sense that we understand a person. And, uh, uh, um, and we know it's not a place. Lightning isn't a place, although it happens in a place. Um, and a thing, um, I guess, can be considered a thing, except it's uh, probably more of a person than a thing because a thing wouldn't have life. Uh, but uh, a person does have life. And uh, since basically without, uh, without spark, without electromagnetism, without electricity, none of our cells would work. We wouldn't, we wouldn't exist. We could not be here. So uh, light is the purest form of energy that we have that is absolutely necessary to everything on Earth. It's the, it's the biggest characteristic of life is uh, um, what is in the, those sun rays, what is in those and what they stimulate and the gravity uh, that they simulate, and the, uh the sun is like, like a huge magnet in that it draws to it, and that's why it keeps planets in orbit, and it sends out. When it sends out those solar flares, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and cosmic uh, CMEs, cosmic molecular exhaust. No, I'm not saying it right, but I, I forgot what that actually means. But it's, um, it's when it's something is expelled from the sun. Uh, these you, they're, they're different than solar flares. They've got different characteristics. And uh, if you go to BP Earth Watch's site, you'll understand more about that um, on YouTube. So, uh, although you won't understand much about scripture from him, I guarantee that. Well, today he might change. Uh, that could change any day. So I can't, I'm not holding him to that. And doesn't mean that everything he says isn't accurate either. I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't imply that. Um, uh, he's definitely saying things that are, uh, are I find to be accurate. And, and I'm no, I'm not the ultimate judge, but uh, um, I can't deny what I've been given in this regard. So I'm going to be honest about the way I feel about it. I call a spade a spade for the most part, even though uh, I could be wrong. Okay, uh, I just don't, uh, I just want to say my piece so that uh, people have a chance to listen to him and not just accept everything he says as verbatim because he very rarely actually goes back and does the kind of analysis that I spend a lot of time doing and that I'm even criticized for doing. Isn't it funny? I get criticized for everything. I'm, now I'm being criticized for uh, going too much of an analysis. You know, that, that says to me that I'm hitting nerves when people don't want to know the truth because I'm hitting nerves. And uh, it's not their fault that it bothers them. I understand how it bothers people. 
when they see the truth and when the truth doesn't match what they've been programmed to believe. And it's upsetting to them that it could be the truth. Because uh, when you talk about the things that Jesus was talking about, that we have been taught only applied to those disciples and uh, to perhaps uh, those that become priests and nuns uh, or, uh, or monks or, or whatever you call a female monk. I guess they're all monks. Um, it's uh, kind of stupid that uh, they have monasteries, but they don't have females in those monasteries. I mean, if they did, of course, the males would all be freaking out all the time trying to uh, have sex with them. So for that reason, it's probably good that they're separate, but uh, the problem with that is they, uh, they end up becoming, I don't know, I was going to say homosexual, but uh, I don't know if that's the case. I mean, because... Because uh, what Doe said about individuals that were gay and Doe's vehicle was gay um, before he was awakened. And when he, after he was awakened, he wasn't heterosexual or homosexual because he had overcome that, although he was still attacked by the discarnates and space alien attacks and the, the programming of his physical body that would have him still and get re-engage his sexuality, but uh, but that his his mind kept at bay uh, for the entire time that he was um, awake in that vehicle, which was the entire time from uh, from sometime in 1972 to. Uh, 1997. Now, how do I know that he didn't, you know, slip or have, uh, you know, have sex with somebody on the side? Uh, um, well, don't you know that if, if that would have happened, that uh, that individual who he would have allegedly had sex with would have certainly come to the fore and talked about it if they, if they left the classroom? And if they didn't leave the classroom, how could they stay in the classroom? when such, such a big picture uh, was surrounding uh, the overcoming of their sexuality, of our sexuality, uh, as part of the things that glued us to human thinking and human behavior. Because it, it does limit us. Uh, the more sexual we are, the more we're giving away our mind, uh, the higher mind potential, because it's like being drunk. Uh, and even though when you're drunk, some people are so used to alcohol, a certain amount of alcohol in their system, that they don't, they don't evidence of being drunk to anybody else. Uh, they could be an alcoholic and you wouldn't even know it because they can, they can walk and talk and think fairly clearly. Uh, of course, it has deg degrees of being a drunk, of course but also degrees of tolerance of the body and you know, how well the li liver functions, I guess, to remove the toxins and uh, other parts of the body uh, for removing the toxins and all that that end up uh, creating a, a, the uh, drunk characteristics. But uh, uh, so, <coughs> so, uh, so the same thing with sexuality. We, you know, we can think that we're, um, we're not affected by it, but um, we won't know that we are affected by it until we get off of it. And we have a certain amount of time of being sober. And I experienced that because while I was in the classroom, I was 18 years sober from sexuality. Um, uh, although I wasn't 100% in control of my eyes all the time, I did let my eyes roam, uh, um, and uh, that did stimulate a certain amount of uh, testosterone production in my physical body, and uh, that 
and I would lose that basically. That eventually has to come out of your body. Uh, but I'm, I'm told that actually you can, it can come out of your body and not come out through the, the channel uh, of uh, the plumbing that's called uh, a penis uh, or a, um, in the case of the male. And I don't know if it's the same for the female, you know, even though they don't have a penis, but they have the, uh, their own like kind of a penis, I guess, is a clitoris. I'm getting graphic here, I know, but uh, I don't know what the heck. It doesn't matter, you know. Uh, next level of members have been through it. They're not. They're not prudes. Uh, you know, I, I, I've, I've been very sexual in my life, but now I'm not very sexual. But uh, I still have have to deal with it. And Doe still had to deal with it through his time. Uh, and um, and during the time for 18 years, I, I didn't give in to it. But I did give in to it in the, in the last year and ended up uh, getting rid of uh, fluids because of it, because of entertaining thoughts in my head uh, that were uh, sexual images. So uh, we've, we've become addicted to that too. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if addicted is the exact word in all cases, uh, but it, it can, yes it is, it's addicted. Uh, because it becomes as hard to get rid of as a heroin addiction would be. And, um, and the first step to getting rid of it is to admit that you have it. But then to talk about it all the time isn't a way to get rid of it, like the people do in the various organizations called Sexaholics Anonymous and, and Sex and Love Addicts Anonymous, and that uh, as a group, uh, Doe had us uh, pay some attention to to see if we could try to help them, because it seems like they were trying to deal with their sexual addictions, and so uh, Doe wanted was allowing students to try to help them with some of the techniques that Tiendo had taught us to deal with that addiction. Part of which was not talking about it, not using the terms that stimulate the, the mind and the emotions that go with it. Even though it's a very slight stimulus when you're an addict, uh, you don't even know the difference. I mean, you, you, if, you're a, if you're an alcoholic, uh, and you're used to drinking, uh, you know, a fifth of whiskey uh, <laughs> every couple of days or something, uh, you know, or a six-pack a day or something, a beer or something like that, uh, you know, then, you know, one beer or a couple of sips of beer isn't going to mean anything to you. You're not going to feel any effects from that. And it's the same thing with sexuality. Uh, when you're used to having sex all the time with somebody else, then uh, having, you know, uh, participating in conversation or seeing pictures of somebody naked or like that is, is not going to hardly stimulate your desire to have sex again much at all, if at all. Uh, it takes a bigger dose uh, each time to get you off. And that's why some people become like professional sexaholics to where they could have sex all day and it still wouldn't uh, uh, come to what they call climax. And uh, because they're able to hold it in because they're, they're so used to getting rid of it, it takes them a long time to build it up and, uh, and release it. So there's a little uh, kind of sex course on there. Uh, which I could go into more, but I want to get on to other things. But if you look at this uh, phrase, the lightning as a noun, lightest as a verb, but you look at lightning and you look at the root of the word, which I talked about in the last broadcast a little bit, as a strape, the root of that, you go to 797, and then you go to is probably from Aster. Well, I can see why they would say probably from Aster, because this word looks like as Astra, Aster, or Ast, 
Okay? Um, so let's look at what Aster looks like, or what Aster says. Aster, or Aster, and what it says it is, is a star. But it also says that a star is something that's strewn over the sky. Now that begins to look like something different than what we've imagined a star to be, doesn't it? Um, because when, when I look up at the sky at night and I see a star, I don't see anything that appears to be strewn over the sky. Um, I, I should have been equipped to uh, give us the definition of strewn, but uh, it's very interesting that um, a comet would look very much like a star with its brightness, and yet and has a long tail, and that tail was compared to hair in the in the ancient times. Uh, it was talked about as hair, and and so it would look it looks like it's strewn over the sky, just like a meteor kind of looks strewn, because like with a meteor you see the breakup of the meteor uh, as it's entering the atmosphere and it's burning up, and it leaves a trail, a streak. I've seen many of those. Uh, and uh, so, so if the basis of what we're calling a star is actually a comet, then why would it be any surprise interpretation to, to look at this word lightning and say, for as or actually, if you look at the word for, it's like uh, assigning a reason. So for the reason of, for the reason of a star-like shining object, shining its light of, can be from as well, from, the undercover heaven, remember I said over, under last week, was, had to do with something being covert, look down here, covertly, which isn't the only indicator of covert in this, because if you look at this Greek word hupo, which I talked about in the last broadcast, but I'm spending more time on now, hupo balo is to throw is the ballo part. And then you say, in stealthily, right here, is the hoopo part. So that's another reason to believe that we're talking about something, because stealth has to do with something that's hidden from view, right? Something that we can't see, like a stealth airplane. Uh, and that, that stealth means that uh, the radar can't even see it. I mean, we may physically be able to see it, but radar can't see it. So in this case, the stealth, I believe, is saying that the human eyes aren't going to see it, and uh, also human instrumentation isn't going to see it. Uh, nothing's going to see it. And uh, so what is it that this lightning really is, this comet really is? Uh, well, how are things hidden? in the next level. How do they hide things? Well, we don't know all the ways that they could hide something that's physical from humans so that they're not seen. But Jesus apparently got into a, went into a room in, uh, after he rose from the dead and uh, proved that he was physical. He showed up inside a room with other disciples and they don't know how he got in there because they didn't, he didn't walk in with them. And, you know, you would think that uh, 10 or 12, 10 or 11 individuals walking into a room would notice if uh, someone like Jesus was with them uh, because he looked so different even before that happened because they were walking with him on the road and they didn't even recognize that it was him. Uh, and then he, 
then he was then he went away and he came back again and uh and to meet them and so when they all went into that room they still didn't know where he was and they were anticipating seeing him so uh they would have been told by the others that did see him when he didn't look like the same Jesus that he didn't look the same no doubt they would have described him to a T right wouldn't you if your teacher uh if you witnessed your teacher being murdered and put in a tomb and then and then the ones that the person that you spent uh potentially years with like even 24/7 and and then uh and then you were told by a couple of disciples your fellow classmates that uh he's risen he's back like he said he was going to be uh cuz he, he said that many times also and uh in a number of ways wouldn't you drill that person for everything they witnessed so no doubt they described to him what he looked like and how they didn't recognize him at first but then when he started to talk they started to recognize his mind because the programming was of the, of his mind actually um had with it what he looked like when that programming was given to those disciples when that data was given to those disciples when that information when those words when his effort was exchanged with those disciples so that they could receive it to themselves so they have had his mind in them every time they did what he said every time they listened to what he said and believed it they received some of his mind and it became their mind their memories their understanding their concepts alongside the things that were still a mystery didn't mean that they it's not like a mind meld like they say in star trek to where you know they took a the hand and uh uh captain kirk put it i think it was captain kirk or somebody put it on spock and spock's mind went into kirk or something or uh, however that worked and uh you know and all of a sudden uh that individual knew all the same information and was just as smart as, as spock uh uh the concept works but uh but is exaggerated and of course that's what hollywood does uh, but they don't know any better they don't even know that it's that they're actually depicting something that has a potential reality to it uh unless unless they're visited by a space alien that shows them that and then they go and produce a hollywood movie whether they remember it or not that's another possibility of how things can happen not and it could be a space alien or it could be a member of the next level that's more likely in many cases uh or both work actually the the space aliens that are in discarded form that try to influence people making movies all the time uh you know to make them uh to give them ideas of things to do but i think most of that takes place with the individuals that were in the industry before that that died and hang around the people the humans that are still in that industry to get you know because that's their passion so they basically want to stay with that even after they're dead and that ends up being a helper to the people that are brainstorming new ideas because they have access to all the ideas of that individual that died previously instead of uh just seeing the ideas that that director or producer or actor or actress had while they were living uh because uh because you know from what they did like in making movies and things I mean that that's how you know when actors study a uh, different uh other actors they study them based on their work but they don't know all the things that they went through in their minds uh to come up with that work and uh so so when when they take on a role uh uh they, they are the the real professional actors have a number of dead actors 
I say a number, I don't know how many. It could be one, it could be two, it could be ten, it could be twenty. I have no idea how many it could be. But they have an entourage that actually become their assistants and are getting off on uh, 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 the process of uh, using this vehicle to make a new movie because they can't do it without a vehicle and they don't have a vehicle so that's the only option they have to actually feel that passion again. And they never, never feel it the way they felt it while they were in the physical vehicle but uh, it at least gives them a mind satisfaction. Just, you know, kind of a, a slight kind of being pleased with I don't even know if it actually can be interpreted that way. I think they're doing it, the spirits are doing it more like an automaton. Because uh, they gravitated to it. It's like they're, they're, they're addicted to it at that point, And they've, they've got to get their fix. And uh, there's no emotion. They have no vehicle to experience any new emotions from. And uh, so they don't feel anything from it at all, I don't think. I don't think they get anything from it. Uh, if they do get anything from it, it's strictly a, a very slight electromagnetic uh, pulse that I don't know that they can even identify as that because they don't have the hardware to do the identification. I, I mean, it sounds confusing, but uh, the more you think about it, actually, the more sense it makes. And I wasn't fed all this all at once. So for people listening to this for the first time, or even the hundredth time, uh, it can still be very hard um, to, to get it in your head. And I'm not necessarily saying everything in the most concise way, obviously. But I want to make a few notes here because I, I always forget what I'm in the what I'm saying in the broadcasts, and uh, <coughs> and I don't want to listen to them again because uh, I find all kinds of things that I need to improve upon, and it's I spend too much time on it. Uh, I need to dump it out best I can and uh, correct it, things as I remember them. And I go over the same things over and over again anyway. So if you're not bored with it, it's because you keep on hearing something a little new. And uh, a little new goes a long way. It does it for me. When I see something new in the scripture, it goes a long way. Even if it's just one word, it's a little different. Like when I first read this word under, and I, and I finally recognized that it was talking about covert. So how do I read that then? I'm saying then for a star-like, for a star-like uh, comet-like object, uh, brightly shining its light, um, from an undercover heaven, heaven meaning an abode of God, a dwelling of members of the kingdom of God, but one that's not seen. So it's covert. It's stealth. So that's where this noun, um, object, person, or even the persons of the object, it doesn't have to be one person. It can be multiple people. Uh, it can be talking about the whole crew of the kingdom of God, which can be uh, the angels, the, some archangels, you know, in the religious terminology, which would be the captains, the, I mean, the angels, the messengers, uh, the watchers. The, uh, uh, the archangel would be the captain of the messengers, and, and then... Uh, the admiral, which would be like the older member or the father or the, the Jehovah uh, over the captain. And the captain would be like Jesus. So what you see then is an entire crew coming. So when it, when it says that as the lightning, 
it's not lightning. It's not a lightning bolt. And even if it was, this word as is also the word even and like. So it's saying for like lightning. The light, the light of this object you can actually interpret lighten, lightning is uh, you know the uh, um, you can you can say that's an object also, but then then you would read it like uh, a like a comet or like a star. Um, lightens shines its light from the cloaked spacecraft heaven, New Jerusalem, city of God, God's angels. That is um, 1,360 miles square, approximately, and uh, uh, I believe uh, um, still, I believe, is uh, hovering uh, right above the planet. Um, it might actually have its base right on on the planet or even to some degree inside the Earth. Uh, then you look at the next word. Shyness, which is lampo. Now we're getting into a different word that has to do with light, but it has to do with the actual beam. So that beam now is going from that cloaked spacecraft to another cloaked spacecraft. So if you just got rid of the, the thing that said part here, you would actually uh, have a more accurate view. The other under heaven uh, cloaked spacecraft. So um, we might be talking about uh, like uh, a mother craft, uh, mothership, perhaps as big as a planet, that is in that is not is cloaked, which might be thought of as Pluto, because Tiendo talked about Pluto as a base. They didn't say it was a base. They 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 made uh, they they introduced that idea in a movie script, and and then they had uh, one of the members of the crew that was an artist uh, airbrush a painting of uh, what was inside that planetary-looking spacecraft that they called Pluto, um, which happened to be discovered about the time that T's vehicle was born, 1927 to 1930. I've seen different numbers. And uh, so that's... So it's cloaked as well because it's inside a planet, so it's not apparent as a uh, as what it is as a next level spacecraft. It doesn't look like um, like that depiction of that global looking planet that was a spacecraft called that the Borg um, occupied. Well, the people are calling the twelfth planet or. Uh, Give the names for it. Um, Twelfth planet and planet X. So one could say that that they're saying that this uh, that the persons uh, that have this light that uh, are shining it from uh, coming from. Uh, spacecraft Pluto, just to, you know, kind of put it in 
more practical terms in terms of what it seems to be indicating. Shines, shines its light, spreads its light, spreads abroad its light, which is actually information, awareness, uh, uh, understandings. It has everything in it, in that light. Uh, to the cloaked, localized heaven that I was talking about before, the New Jerusalem Holy City. And that is how the Son of Man will be in his day. So, in this way, Also, or even, or so then, or to, Son of Man, be B is SOMA. Oh, for the people that can only hear this on the radio, I'm sorry, but I wasn't telling you. I was, I was going along with clicking on each uh, part of uh, Strong's Concordance. Because I'm, I'm doing this all on Strong's Concordance so I can show everybody the exact Greek words that are going with each of these English words. And uh, so if you want to see this, actually get a more full uh, understanding of what I'm talking about using the visual characteristics, then go to my YouTube channel, 3SPM. 3 is the number 3, S as in Sam, P as in Peter, M as in Mary. Um, so the word so in that verse I'm saying is in this way or after that so after that so it doesn't mean uh, that this is all happening simultaneously it means that this this effort this light this mind projection by real living beings from this real physical spacecraft that's the size of a planet is actually being sent like a beam to the earth to, to actually that's going to actually be focused on the undercover cloaked spacecraft that's in the atmosphere of the earth uh, even though it's very large in the atmosphere of the earth it has a very tall a wall. And that's what it says in the book of Revelations, that it has a very tall wall. And, that it's, and then it's, it's uh, walls are uh, shaped uh, like a, a quadrangle, uh, a quad, four sides. And they're all the same size, the, the, all three dimensions are the same which I've talked about before, you can lay out onto uh, basically the western United States and Canada uh, with a line roughly going up the Mississippi, uh, somewhere close to Chicago, into Canada, and then, uh, and then another line going from uh, maybe Brownsville, taking all of Texas in and Corpus Christi and uh, all, from the Gulf all the way to the San Diego area, maybe a little bit out into the water, maybe a little bit not. I don't think they really need to be outside the, in the water because the whole idea was to, to, to put boundaries on uh, where the spacecraft was going to be so that um, the two witnesses could uh, perform their prophecies within the boundaries of that spacecraft, even though uh, they did venture outside those boundaries a few times, very briefly. Uh, it was uh, that was their instruction at the time. They, 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 uh, T and O didn't have an instruction that they could not go outside uh, east of the Mississippi. They just felt like every time they did, they were they were uh, they had less of a felt less of a connection with uh, what they believed was their older members, which Doe said was actually T, because T didn't need to be in more than one place at a time doing tasks. 
where Doe couldn't be in more than one place at a time doing tasks, because he hadn't grown to that yet. Um, so that his vehicle in the next level had to be put in a closet, because uh, it wouldn't have had enough mind to actually function. But uh, anyway, so that's all recapping other things I've said in the past. But it's all, it's all good, I think. Um, And then, uh, and th and then of course, Son of Man is a big key here. Because who's coming? The Son of Man is coming. What is the Son of Man? Like I said before, it's human offspring. So he's going to be in human form. It's not going to be, uh, it's not going to look like Jesus, or would have said Jesus was going to be here. But don't forget, Jesus said not to believe anybody who comes saying that they're Jesus and they're Christ. Uh, if they come saying they're Jesus but not a Christ, that's fine. Because there's people that are named Jesus. Just like there's people that are named Lucy and, and Lucifer that aren't related at all to the Lucifer or the, the, the fallen angel space aliens. Uh, the adversary, uh, Satan, of the uh, of Doe, actually. Uh, Doe's adversary. Jesus' adversary. Um, and that's how he will be in his day. And be actually means, comes from the word, what would follow, live long, sojourn, but also is related to I exist. This is how the Son of Man, the offspring human, would exist in his day. Now, don't forget the actual definition of Jehovah is I exist, or uh, yeah, I am. Remember how Jehovah gave Moses an answer to Moses' question on uh, who should I say is giving me these instructions? And he said, tell him that uh, I am sent you. Well, I am is the same thing as I me. Isn't that interesting that it's I me in the Greek? That's the way it's pronounced, E-I-M-I. I me, and it means am, have been, it is, I, it is I. So, uh, then in his day, his actually can be also there. So this could also be referring to more than one individual. And then, and then, if, then if you said offspring human, that doesn't necessarily mean singular. So this also opens the door to being a fulfillment of the two witnesses prophecy. And so then it wouldn't be his, it would be their, their day. And they having to do with Hora day hour instant season. Now that's the way more like more like uh, Jesus talked about it as a season or, or an eon or a uh, um, but it also says in his day in his to sit is actually uh, this word. Day is Hamera, a derivative of Hamai, to sit. So, so is the, the offspring human existing in, I forgot it, but in, in relation, sitting in relation to their Season, I would say. And when you say it's season, you're talking about between dawn and dark. That's interesting that it says day. Uh, and the day is between dawn and dark. But from the next level's perspective, dawn and dark are, it's dawn, 
when the next level is incarnate, and then it's dark after they leave, when they exit. So right now, uh, we're uh, slowly moving into the dark time. And when during the dark time, uh, humans will not be able to understand this information at all and have it applied to uh, the reality that T and Do brought to it. Um, and I don't know if there'll be much time for that to go backwards because it's recycling time because the third trimester is over. And also the day also has to do with judgment day. So, so the Son of Man will be in his judgment day or time or uh, years even, uh, depending on the context. Um, but to sit uh, is that actually uh, in the Bible has to do with uh, having a position, like a, a seat on the spacecraft as a pilot. You have a seat, and that's your task. So it has to do with not, not, not a position, but not a position in terms of hierarchy, but a position in, size, in terms of task. So, so will, so will the offspring human be during their task. It also means day. I'm not saying that the words I'm suggesting are, the, are uh, replacement interpretations. I'm saying they're added interpretations and translations. But to not even consider them is blasphemy. Uh, well, I don't know if blasphemy is the right word for it, but it's, uh, um, it's denying... Uh, the potential truth right in front of you because it's too painful to want to change to, to think about changing that's why it's going to be rare that a uh, Christian leader preacher evangel evangelical and evangelical is going to ever see T and Do as the return and and even pay attention to uh, any of the scriptures that I reinterpret and retranslate. Uh, they have a vested interest in not paying any attention to it and keeping everybody else away from it as well. But uh, um, uh, uh, they're not gonna, they're gonna, well, the next level is gonna see to it that this information is provided for a while. All right. Now, I want to skip over to the other verse that is kin to this verse. Yeah. This thing's not... Which is the Matthew verse. I was, oh, that was the Luke 7, uh, chapter 17, verse uh, 24 that I was talking about then. And uh, just so you know that it's... Um, little old me here. I'm going to skip over back to this. Oh, the, by the way, up here, for people that are watching the video of this, you can see that this is the, this is the individual that uh, my top to my right um, is what T described an older member of the next level to look like. Now, notice they're wearing a suit. Notice they're also, they have an ear. They have a nose. They have lips, mouth, and they have eyes. So, you know, humans were created in their image. They have a head, they have arms, they have a torso, they have legs. You can't see the legs, but these, these do have legs. Well, you know what? I don't know for a fact that they have legs. They may glide like uh, like was depicted in that cocoon movie. I don't know if they had legs in the cocoon movie or not. But I imagine they do have legs. Cause, uh, I don't know for sure, though. Anyway, and I wrote over here 
But this picture was designed by T and, Do, T and painted by Alodi. With an, Al, Alodi was a student who was one of the 38 that laid down his life in 1907. With an airbrush, he drew it first by hand with pencil sketch, and then he uh, used an airbrush to color it. Uh, to b depict what a member of the next level would look like, but I believe it was like an older member of the next level. I don't know if that matters that much. The younger members may look the same. Even though they look similar, uh, maybe to us they may look all the same, but you know, you know how that works. Uh, if you were born a Caucasian in the United States, you may think that all Chinese look the same or all Japanese look the same, or all ja or, or Orientals all look the same, when they all look different to uh, people in their culture. Um, and if you actually get to know different individuals that are from that part of the world, you, you learn to recognize their differences. Just like if you, if you get to know twins, you get to recognize their differences because uh, even twins grow with a different mindset. It might not be far different. And they have a lot of, it's going to have a lot of commonality because the genes are coming from the same place. So a lot of the subconscious programming is going to be the same. But uh, as they experience in life, if they're not always together, then uh, they will have different experiences and uh, so their minds will develop a little differently. Now, I also added to this description that pictures of greys are distortions of ro or robots or suits made to look grotesque. Because we've seen pictures of them where their head is so big and their, their limbs are so thin and, and they look like insects, like in that Close Encounters of the Third Kind movie, where the, the older member was grotesque looking and huge, and, you know, why, and why would you have to almost like crawl out of that, that doorway, where the, all the other members who were allegedly younger, they may look childlike, of course, which is fine, but the, there aren't children inside those bodies. They're very, very uh, advanced souls that had overcome their humanness uh, many, many thousands of years before that. And could have been some that just graduated, you know, 10,000 years ago, for, for all I know. I, I don't know exactly. Or could have graduated from another planet uh, more recently than that. My understanding is that the next level doesn't do a lot of graduation experiences all at once. Uh, T&O, no, I believe, said that they don't do more than, they only have one done at a time. That might be why the next level had... Uh, is going to show up when they come back uh, with their full force. That might end up being thousands and thousands of spacecrafts all around us so that humans will have to take notice. Everybody will see it. And those that are blind uh, will feel it and will see it in their heads. The next level is not going to leave anybody out. Um, so let me get on to this other verse here. Now this one says, For as the lightning cometh out of the east, I wonder if I can have both of them right there. Oh, that's not necessary. For as lightning cometh of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Very similar, right? But it's got this east and west kind of stuff in it. And when I looked at the, west, the east, it was very interesting. It comes out to be uh, 395. Uh, and at Ole, which is from 
Anatello, 393. Now, Anatello comes from Anna and Telos, to cause to arise, to make rise at the rising, spring up, be up. And uh, if you go back another level to Telos, uh, it's, it says that it's uh, to set out for a definite point or goal, that, which um, is interesting because of the fact that uh, four over here has to do with doing something with a purpose, assigning a reason. So, uh, so the goal in this case Uh, cometh out of the east. Now, it doesn't even mention heaven in this one. I don't know how whoever took this down missed that part. It seems like it was a pretty essential piece to the puzzle. But then again, uh, different views have their benefits. So this view is that this lighted object, this might actually be depicting two stages of that same approach. Because this is saying that this lighted object, because this, because this lighted object is coming, is being issued, is coming forth, is departing out of outer space, out of heaven, out of the heavens, uh, escaping or get out, go abroad, or proceed or spread abroad. Let me use spread abroad. For as this lighted object or that is some kind of a spacecraft um, be it in a comet or uh, uh, behind the comet because uh, the next level could be using the comet as like a bus to travel behind and with so that they're cloaked to human satellites and you know all those telescopes and stuff, because they don't want uh, they don't want to make it too obvious, because this way it gives humans all the options to deny it and everything. So people can choose what they want to choose, and that's free will. So, uh, but the, f the fact would still be the same that they come they're coming in a spacecraft from the heaven local and distant, and they're coming out of the east. Now let's look at what east is. It's saying it's the rising of the light. It's not, there's no, it's not actually the word yeast. East, well, is a potential uh, interpretation they're saying here, but it's also day spring. So they're, they're coming from, of is also from, from rising from the day spring from the east and Anatello which is related to east uh, talks about Anatellos which is the same thing as before it's a rising to rise up to spring up to be up But east is figuratively dawn. Now, remember how Jesus said he was going to be the bright morning star? Well, that actually word morning is actually dawn. It's actually the same as this. It's the, it's the rising of the light. That's who Jesus is going to be. So he's saying right here that this is the way he's coming. As a light, as a star. Um, but, remember at the end it says it's going to be a son of man. So it's going to be a human vehicle that's coming using that star, that spacecraft star. And, uh, and that 
he's going to end up shyness, which is pheno, which is actually to lighten, but also means to show, transitive or intransitive, literal or figurative, so appear. So he's going to uh, come out of the rising, um, which uh, is very interesting that the, sp the first spacecraft that crashed and where there was a body, there was only one body, was found in Aurora, Texas. Aurora means dawn. Aurora, Texas. Texas is the part of the, the riverboat for a Mississippi riverboat where the captain's quarters are is called a Texas or Tejas. I'm not sure exactly how you would pronounce it in the original Spanish that it's related to. But, uh, and uh, so it wasn't an accident that Samuel Clemens, writing as Mark Twain, was uh, a riverboat captain. And yet he also talked about a lot of things that were very unusual and had a very keen wit about him and was way ahead of his time and, and, and suspected that uh, uh, um, you could have somebody traveling to heaven on a comet. Because he wrote that Professor Strongfield uh, um, book or essay that he, uh, I, I don't know how he published it, but but that Edison, Thomas Alva Edison, did the, uh, the first movie of, and you can find that on the internet. It's very interesting to watch it. Which, which That movie was made uh, in, in Stormfield, which is what uh, Samuel Adams called uh, his house in Connecticut. In Connecticut, it looks like connect, kinetic, or connect. I mean, it's not uncommon for the next level to uh, see to it that all kinds of words also have correlations. Uh, in fact, Tiendo said that the next level actually does that as a matter of fun. Because it's not that significant. Nobody's going to make a decision based on that kind of stuff. But uh, when you see it, you, have to, you can't help but chuckle and, and wonder if uh, they actually, you know, gave that human that idea to call something something because they knew that down the road it would be applicable to something in, in Scripture. Wow, we're basically dry as a bone with 20 minutes left. So, I'm just to let you know that I'm here. So that that word um, shineth, did I say to lighten or shine, show transitive or intransitive, literal or figurative, appear, appear. So, for as the lightning, for as the object transporting the two witnesses comes, issues forth, departs, or spreads abroad from the dawn, from the arrival. So this, so uh, so the way I'm talking about this with that, that crash of a spacecraft with one body found that made it to the newspapers, and there's only two that made it to the newspapers. Well, that's not, well, maybe that's not true. I don't know if the crash at Aztec ended up making it to the newspapers, but it certainly made it to, 
to being documented uh, by a lot of material in Crash at Aztec in that book. Uh, it's definitely worth getting. It has the autopsies of the alien bodies on, on it uh, in detail. Um, I should actually get a copy myself since I'm mentioning it. But uh, So the shining is, is uh, coming from the rising and then is extending to the west. But west is really, look at this word for west. West is actually the sunset we're talking about. Okay. Now, remember, we're talking about the sun, soul. The sun's name is actually Sol, S-O-L, which it's not an accident that it, it rhymes with S-O-U-L for soul, like a spiritual soul, which T.N.O. said was a pocket, was a container, was um, like a balloon, and Jesus talked about it as a wineskin and as a seed uh, that's actually literally given to each individual that is... Um, seen as uh, um, ripe to receive it so that it can potentially grow it into a next level member after it overcomes the human environment and the human condition through the hands-on teachings of their older member who is in the flesh so that they can teach us one-on-one -on -one so that we can have a total, totally clear conversation about it all as we go, because it doesn't happen overnight. The overcoming takes, takes time. And a lot of the overcoming is basically uh, filtering out the individuals that really aren't ready for it, or are choosing not to be ready for it. We don't know the difference. <laughs> I guess everyone that Tiendo uh, allowed to stay in the classroom, because some they didn't even allow to join the classroom when they were talking about it in 1975 and 6. And, uh, and others they wouldn't allow to stay in the classroom, like they sent 19 away in 1976 and told them that they weren't ready yet. But if they keep on looking to the next level, they will be ready in the future. And some of those did end up keep on looking to the next level and did make it back. Uh, and we joined the class and were part of the 38. But, uh, you know, you don't see, you don't see any of the, uh, the cult behavior in the human kingdom uh, that doesn't have any resemblance to anything that Tien Do taught and did in their group that, w that is also called a cult or a subculture or a uh, cult of cults is what they really were. But uh, Tien Do called it the actual cult of truth. And that meant the, the organization, uh, the cult of reality, as opposed to illusion. Remember the Hindu word for illusion is Maya? Remember how the word Babylon actually means confusion? Well, that's the same thing as illusion. Confusion, illusion is all related. It's when you've got a smoke screen when you're when you're blind because when you're addicted and you don't know you're drunk then you're blind to the truth but this word west also says Well, I have to look at all these words that talk about, that start with this pronunciation of or D-U-S, D-U-S, D-U-S. Uh, so they're all do's me, do's no etos, do's fe mia. Um, uh, and 
so then West can actually mean any of these. Can mean uh, when he's finished. Because if you look at actually do know where the, the word do's may comes from, that it comes from the word West, it says that uh, or do me, do me, prolonged forms of an obsolete primary duo, do oh, to sink, to go down, to set. Um, to go down is a, another way of saying that they're going to the, go to the grave. They're going to send their bodies to the grave. They're going to, they're going to exit by death. And that's what it actually apokataino means. Um, it means exit by or through death. It took me a long time to arrive at that. And it wasn't a casual observation and definition to come by. But is the one that makes the most sense uh, related. And I wouldn't have, I wouldn't think that if I didn't believe that T and Doe were the two witnesses and that they were shot down by the press, which was in Revelations 11, 7, I think, uh, uh, where they were subdued. Because they weren't killed when they were shot down by the press. Uh, they were just subdued. Didn't stop them from fulfilling their task. It says, they were, it says they were overcome, but overcome is a bit strong because they did go on from that. And of course, I wouldn't say that had I not experienced it and then uh, uh, tried to make it fit. So yes, I've tried to make Tiendo's reality fit into prophecy. And you know what? Uh, it's really working well. Because it's just... Uh, you know, when humans try to make it fit, they make one thing fit, but it, then it, it contradicts a whole bunch of other things, and it looks different than a whole bunch of other things, and, uh, and it doesn't have the context of, of the same context, and doesn't fulfill any more prophecies besides that one thing that they're trying to make fit. So it's, it's a facsimile of trying to make things fit. You know, I mean, using that against us, trying to make things fit. I wouldn't be able to understand any of this if I hadn't been in Tiendo's classroom to where I was given examples of their behavior and ways and thinking and concepts and everything to where my mind could be open enough to uh, be willing to look at all these words and, and pull out of them what might be the... Uh, the best, more, most accurate meaning, even though there's layers of accuracy to allow people with a free will to choose which layer they want to believe in. But it also says that this, the, this word, do know, is related to duo, two both, twain. Is it any accident that Samuel Clemens, uh, Mark Twain, said that uh, he came in with Haley's Comet and he hoped that he would go out with Haley's Comet and would be very disappointed if he didn't go out with Haley's Comet and yet within weeks of both dates he was born his vehicle was born and his vehicle died. And I believe his vehicle died without uh, much notice. It wasn't like he got sick and then he was, you know, sick for a long time as far as I understand. Even though if he was, that's fine. That's, you know, par for the course. It was two weeks before T, when we found out that T was diagnosed with cancer in the liver and uh, and actually left her vehicle. And before that, we didn't see any signs of any problems with T except when she had her eye removed. And we didn't even know about that there were problems with that before that. Maybe some did, but I didn't. And I don't think most of the class did. Though even said that uh, T was very good at uh, not showing 
um, her discomfort. But he, he said for a long time she was only able to eat, hold down, like uh, toast, like buttered toast. That was what she was living on for quite a while. I mean, she ate other things too, but uh, I think sometimes uh, her system was upset so that uh, she would just find dry toast. I don't think it was even buttered. I think it was dry toast was the most satisfying to her. So that's West. So, and the fact is that they rose, the two witnesses rose in the East, like I said a few days ago, and they said in the West. So the sun got his rise in the East when T woke him up to who he was and the task that they had to do together. They both got their rise, but it was also the birthing of Doe to his task of holding down the throne by himself. And that's what T said she came to do, to help him do, which at first he didn't understand what she was talking about because she would say, I'm just here to get you going and then I'm going back. And Doe wondered, is she talking about going back to her family, her human family? He said he couldn't imagine that after what they'd been through when she was saying that. And, uh, and then after she left her vehicle, he realized what she was talking about, that going back meant uh, leaving the incarnation and going back to finish the task uh, while on station on her spacecraft spacecraft she was the admiral of, or the fleet she was the admiral of. And there's been evidence of a fleet. Uh, there's a recent photograph taken from the International Space Station, I'm told, and I saw, I don't know if it was a hoax or not, but if it was real, it looked like a fleet. And I believe it's a fleet, there is a fleet, so uh, there's no reason for me to think that that was a hoax. Because I would imagine that the next level is going to show their fleet to people at different times, briefly. They're not going to do anything, anything like in a huge way until it's all over. I mean, huge way meaning like they're just going to bring all their spacecraft close enough so that everybody can see them, like I said before. And then there won't be anybody that doesn't see them. And I think that's what, uh, that may be depicted in here too. I needed to get more water next time. Well, I might not be doing these two hour broadcasts anymore. Uh, so what I'm going to try to do is uh, I'm going to do a, a video broadcast and then in the last half hour I'm going to turn on Blog Talk Radio because it'll be like, uh, which would be by about 11 o'clock. I would turn on Blog Talk Radio because that's the earliest slot I can get because uh, I'm going to go stop paying for Blog Talk Radio. And uh, I mean I got hardly anybody following me anymore on Blog Talk Radio anyway. Maybe because if they can see me talking, it's a little better. Uh, um, let's see, where should I go next? Okay, this seems to be related. The next verse says, for wherever the corpse, it says carcass, but this is talking about dead bodies. But it's not just talking about dead bodies, it's talking about Pip2, which is 498, which is ruined bodies. It's a rune. And this is the same word that was translated as dead bodies with uh, the Revelations 11, two witnesses. 
saying that their dead bodies lie in the street, when it was just even more accurate to say they're ruined bodies, they're subdued bodies, they're overcome bodies. Uh, they weren't really... They weren't really overcome. That's why I'm using the word subdue. And subdue is a legitimate word to use in the translations of, uh, coming from Strong's Concordance. But uh, it can also be talking about their lifeless body, their corpse, and uh, in this case. And uh, since uh, San Diego, Rancho Santa Fe, which is near Escondido, which is near San Diego, um, is where uh, Doe and 38 crew members, students, laid down their lives in 1997 in March. We're coming up the anniversary of now. Uh, and uh, there's going to be more fireworks. Uh, just yesterday or so, there was a huge... Uh, fireball sighting um, in Iowa. I don't know, you know, I don't, I don't have too many details of it right now. But uh, BP Earthwatch is very good for following all that. But he's not alone. There's uh, sites that are dedicated to uh, meteor shower sightings or meteor sightings or fireball sightings. Now, these fireballs that are being seen since 2008 and that have been uh, dominating the airway, the, uh, the, the, the news in some ways, well, they really haven't been dominating the news. I should back up because uh, it's being kept out of the news because they don't want people to be too alarmed. But there are, there are all kinds of sightings happening every day, I believe, and uh, in different parts of the world. And the United States is geared to get a big chunk of those. The biggest part of those will be in the United States. And then there will be lesser amounts in all the English-speaking um, areas around the world where English is their primary language. Or secondary language, I guess. Is, you know, uh, as long as it's taught in the schools, I believe it's, uh, it's going to qualify as being part of the courtyard that's outside the temple ground, so outside of that river, Mississippi River, west of the Mississippi River area. While what's going to happen to the area uh, uh, west of the Mississippi River is uh, uh, recycling, slowly, so to give the people there the chance to um, wake up as well. But uh, the main ones that are being um, considered the, uh, the, electin, the elected, the chosen, the, one, the ones who chose to look to the one called Jesus. So even though uh, they've been uh, tricked to think Jesus was somebody he's not by you know, quoting primarily what Paul taught. And Paul had a lot of things wrong because he didn't know Jesus. So he, and he was taken over by, a, you know, a spacecraft that went against his will because his will was to prosecute and persecute and even oversee the killing of disciples of Jesus. That was his will. So he was changed from that will by that beam of light that blinded him. So that was forcing him to believe something the next level would not do to anybody. They have no need to do that. Why, why would they work so hard with uh, 11 or 12 uh, uh, disciples grooming them to go out and tell the truth after he left? And then go to somebody that was not groomed for anything. And, and make them into a, the equivalent of the others. It couldn't be the equivalent. It's impossible. And with that, seven seconds left, I'm going to say good night. Thank you, Tian Do, for this opportunity.